welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I demand war. War, war, war. What is it good for? My entertainment. <laughs> Sing it again, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in today's episode, we will be reviewing Season 7, Episode 15, Triple Threat. And in this episode, when Spike accidentally invites Princess Amber and Torex to Ponyville on the same day, he believes they won't get along and tries to keep them apart. Like a bad sitcom. <laughs> so anywho, before we head into the reviews, let's, well, give our first impressions of this episode. So Silver, what do you think, man? Well, there's a lot to enjoy in this episode. The return of both Ember and Thorax, who are great characters. The more you see a thorax, I think the more you get used to the new changeling look. And we'll cover that even more uh, in just a few episodes. But the one character who doesn't come out of this very well is Spike. And that's not great when it's a Spike episode. But is it a surprise? Like, this is kind of the forte when it comes to Spike right now. Flashback to Gauntlet of Fire. No other map has said, you are causing the friendship problem. And you just think to yourself, man, even when Starlight was at her, was brainwashing the main six, the map didn't call her out. So I just think even though he finally gets a map episode, he's being the source of the problem. Come on. Spike episodes don't work when he's making the problem. He's at his best helping solve a problem. And I don't understand why the, the show staff seem to constantly cast him in this role for his episodes, but not the main six. Yeah, that's true. And, well, Spike is a special case. Like, the writers don't even know what to do with him. And that's not good. By and large, the positives far outweigh the, the negatives, especially Ember's interactions with Twilight and Starlight. <laughs> more on that when we get into the specifics, but I really enjoyed it. I just wish Spike could have a more positive showing. Mm-hmm, totally agree, totally agree. And as for me, this episode was a fun one. I like Ember. Ember is one of those characters where you gotta love her because of her attitude, her looks, her personality. I mean, the actress who plays Ember here really brings her out. You believe that's her. She's a badass princess who is a bit moody. And I, I think the word is Sundare. So, <laughs> so take that, um, take that as you may, but her personality really pops out. And having her in this episode is kind of a treat. The only downside here is that the way that this episode portrays Spike, like you mentioned, uh, in all honesty, I would love to see a really good Spike episode. And there's a few moments in this episode that we can tell that, oh boy, Spike's been hanging out with Twilight for too much. So, yeah. We'll go to the specifics when we reach there, but I kind of like this episode. I, I was highly entertained by this episode. There's no downside on my end besides the whole spike thing that you mentioned before, Silver. But other than that, I like this episode. And all hail the Sundare princess. Ah, oh, yes. You know what? I just need to know who is her voice actress. Uh, let's see. Ellie Miller? Huh. All the anime fans were just like, I, I, I want a Sundare princess. <laughs> Super kawaii desu. <laughs> okay, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, Super Kusama, yamite. <laughs> you, stop watching anime. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if you have... <laughs> oh, go in the side. <laughs> Norman Chan. Uh, Uh, So if you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, please go watch it before, well, we spoil it. Welcome back. So in this, uh, we start off with our heroes at Town Hall preparing decorations for the arrival of Princess Amber. Uh, Spike is checking the list and making sure that it's checked twice. And Starlight goes to him and says, you've been hanging out with Twilight too much. And Twilight smiles awkwardly. Although it's appropriate that Starlight's saying this to Spike. As he's checking this twice, she's been naughty and nice, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. 
Uh, but they discuss that Spike, you don't have to worry about anything. This is gonna go without a hitch. Like, what could go wrong? <laughs> oh, famous last words. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if those famous last words. Um, Torex comes and says hi to Spike. <laughs> and Spike is surprised, like, what? Why? And Torex says, oh, you invited me. Um, uh, I'm never gonna turn down an invitation. Ooh, cool fire. He's impressed by the decorations. And Spike here panics because, oh god, I said I'll help Torex and I invited him on the same day that Ember's coming. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Although I'm worried for Thorax, if he's that smitten with fire, I just fear the Changeling Empire has a bug zapper nearby. <laughs> Don't go into the light! Don't go into the light! <laughs> no, Thorax, I'm a <laughs> Oh, you're going to kill me. <laughs> uh, well, anywho. Um, well, uh, while Thorax is being enchanted by fire... Starlight says, what could go wrong? I mean, it's not like Torex and Ember are going to fight and start a war or anything like that. I mean, they're cool guys. And Spike goes into a panic saying that, oh my god, they're one's, pa- uh, one's timid, one's aggro. Oh god, no, they're, they're going to start a war. Oh no, because there's going to be doom. Oh no, oh no, and hyperventilates. He has the best color fantasy. It's red versus red and blue versus blue. It's I against me and me against you. <laughs> da na 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 na. Uh, red versus blue. I wonder who, where's the, uh, RVP. Uh, Rooster Teeth. Uh, I forgot them. <laughs> Need to watch more. Oh, you'd never forget the Rooster Teeth. Do not forget the donut. <laughs> uh, but still, I, I just find this funny because remember way back when in the first episode of season seven where. Spike kind of pops Twilight's bubble for you're overreacting much. <laughs> well, he has been hanging out with Twilight too long, just as uh, just as Starlight said. Yep, yep. And Torex comes to Spike and tries to tell him that, hey, um, I have problems. Can you uh help me with it? And before he can uh, say what his problems are, Amber comes in, and with that, Spike signals. Torex to, you know what, go to the castle. It'll be a fun place to go. You should hang out with Twilight. Yes, go, 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 go. And with that, he goes with Twilight to the castle. Amber comes in and is greeted to a hearty welcome with uh, trumpets and stuff. And ponies in adorable outfits. Yes. Uh, that, that one at the corner there is fleeing for her life. She's scared. <laughs> With good reason. Ember does come across as imposing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Especially if she starts lighting the whole place on fire. It's not her fault that she's allergic to hugs. And with that, Ember's just puzzled at the place. Like, hmm, this place is a bit colorful than the Dragonland. Usually it's all brown and scorch. And after the sneeze that you mentioned, yes, there's a good reason why it's all brown and scorch. Amber here greets Star. Sorry, Amber here greets Star Twilight, <laughs> and Starlight says, "Twilight, no, I- I'm Starlight. Nice to meet you." Um, and I-, I don't know how appropriate this is or not, but it seems that Amber sees the ponies all the same. That's racist. <laughs> Although technically species is. <sighs> I. I- can't blame her? I I don't know. Can you blame her, Silver? Well, I I will say that some ponies bear a very striking resemblance to one another. I would not blame you for getting them mixed up. However, I believe we get later on when uh, when Ember is talking about Twilight and Starlight, Mm -hmm. uh, you you get some of the best meta humor. (laughs) Saying, you both have sparkles for Cutie marks. You're both purplish, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's it's kind of funny. After all the brouhaha about fame and misfortune, it was kind of nice to see the show poke fun at itself. <laughs> yeah, and this kind of joke makes sense in terms of uh, this is from a dragon's point of view, where dragons don't really communicate with ponies that much. So from their point of view, they look the same. But again, species. <laughs> 
Uh, but anywho, I just want to say I, I enjoyed when uh, when Starlight said I like her, <laughs> and all I'm all I think of them is them doing chest bumps. Oh yeah, Ember Righteous. Oh now all they need to go is into a phone booth and travel through time. Ikimaso Ember Sama. Ah, but anywho, Ember says where's Twilight, and they say that she's in the castle, and Ember says, "Yo, let's ride. Let's go meet with." Twilight. And yeah. And Starla is going to enjoy this. Like this is the highlight of her day. So they reach into the castle and Ember says, where's Twilight? Uh, I guess she's around uh, before that. Why don't you go uh, eat? Yes. Uh, go to the dining room. Have food. Yes. And when they reach there, um, the concept of food is interesting for dragons. Yeah, it's part of the scenery. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not a fan of Twilight's interior that still looks like an evil overlord's den. So maybe I should be grateful to Ember for adding some variety. At the same time, I do mean it when I say Twilight needs to start stop letting people destroy her home. Seems like every dignitary that comes through tries to blow her place up. At least this time it's not getting blown up. It's being eaten, but... Who am I to complain, right? Does your home get blown up on a regular basis? I could not confirm nor deny that. But still, Twilight Spike says to Starlight, distract her and I'll fetch Twilight. And Starlight here just says, okay, but you have to explain to Twilight why Ember's eating her home. And with that, <laughs> we go to the library where um, Twilight is... Sitting in strange poses for Thorax. <laughs> oh yes, all the poses. Now Thorax, draw me like one of your French uh, changelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no! Oh god, no! Yes, and while uh, Spike comes in and says hello to Thorax, and says that. Hey, you're hungry, right? Why don't we go to town and get some food? Poor Torax, like, he's really in need of guidance from Spike, but he's not getting any because of the whole Dragon Lord being there and stuff, and uh, poor guy, man. Poor guy, it's just, he just wants someone to talk to, but, uh, well, you can't just drop by unannounced and, uh, okay, I guess it's not totally unannounced because Spike extended the offer. But usually I think it's in good manners to call ahead and say, hey, I'm on my way. Well, in, in all honesty, the Changeling Hive, well, at least the new one, doesn't have a postal service. So it's kind of hard for them to kind of send mail or send a text to them. Oh, wait, no, I think we found a new business they could venture into. Changeling Grams. You can actually take on the guise of the person sending the letter and have them communicate as if you were really there. That is a good idea. I totally agree with that. At first, I was going to shut it down, but no, it is a really smart idea. I like it. That's right. They owe me, they owe me a quarter for every time they use that idea. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I'll see. Um, Spike tells uh, Torex to hit to town with... Uh, with who was it again? Starlight or with Twilight? I, I don't really fully remember this one. Oh, they pull the castling, I believe. So Twilight and Ember are hanging out of the castle, and Starlight is trying to get Thorax out of the castle. She's trying to, and, uh, trying to, but mostly Spike's out in the world trying to uh, cover things on his own. Ah. Where we get to see Lyra and Bon Bon having a tizzy. Ah, and before that, while the whole plan is in action, Twilight is being dragged to the friendship table or the map, whatever it's called. And while he panics, suddenly Spike starts to glow or his scale starts to glow or his fins. Well, what do you call that part? Spike spikes? Yeah, I think so. That's how I remember. But anywho, um, his spike starts to glow and the map says that, hey, there's a friendship problem. You need to solve it. And Twilight's like very excited, like, hee hee, the map is calling you, this is amazing, hee hee. She's come a long way from her, from last season where she was like, oh, I'm bored, everyone's getting chosen except me. 
Starlight comes in and says, Oh gosh, map problem. Glowing spike. Uh, at least they are in Ponyville, so you don't have to travel far. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good, that's good. And so the plan starts with Spike going around town trying to find the friendship problem. And I'm not 100% sure how many times Spike has been on a friendship problem, but he's doing all the same mistakes that the quote-unquote main six did before. Just looking to find the problem willy-nilly? Yep. Now here's the thing. We know that a lot of fans ship Lyra and Bon Bon because they're always together. Mm-hmm. And that is cute. But I noticed before then, there are two stallions at a table with roses in between them. And it looks like a very fanciful dinner. And I just wonder, will fans ship these two stallions as well? Uh, hey? Hey? Uh, I don't know. The fandom hasn't been active in the shipping department. But in all honesty, to me, this is just one of those restaurants with fancy table decorations. You've been to those kind of places, right? I've been to holes in the wall, son. <laughs> oh god, no. So yeah, so those so there's those kind of places. <laughs> it's like you order order a beer or they get the shotgun. <laughs> what kind of restaurant is that? Mm, um, the one from The Simpsons. Moe's? <laughs> now from a beer a bar when Homer got kicked out of Moe's. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. <clears throat> But anywho, uh, Lyra and Bonbon are arguing, and Spike is there to save the day. And we go back to the castle. We see Ember kind of redecorating the castle a bit. Twilight pops in, gives Ember a hug, and says that, Hey, um, you know what? Why don't we head out and look at the town to, well, make friends? You're, you're having pro- friendship problems, right? So why don't we head down to town and kind of make friends? Yes, officially, with the Princess of Friendship. So let's go. And in another part of the castle, we get to see Torex trying out the new, well, trying out the chair. I won't say new, but trying out the chair, sitting in various locations or positions. And Starlet oh, pops in. Oh, me like one of your French ponies. God, uh, Starlight comes in and says, Hi, buddy, uh, you know what? Why don't we head down to town and kind of have something to eat? Eating is good, right? Yes, let's go and eat. Once we're in town, we get to see uh, Spike resolving uh, Lyra's bonbon's problem about cupcakes, was it? I have to check the transcript. That memory's a little foggy. Yeah, something about muffins or something like that. And, well, that doesn't seem to be the problem of the friendship map. And Spike notices Starlight and Torex having a nice cup of tea. Starlight kind of give a wink-wink nudge-nudge to Spike saying that, Hey, um, Amber and Twilight are in the castle, so you're free to talk to Torex about his problem. So go ahead and see what he needs to do. So I found the uh, the source of the argument with Lyra and Bon Bon. Uh, Lyra says vanilla strawberry cream is overused in cupcakes because Spike later says, and that's why you should never let cupcake flavors get in the way of your friendship. So the de- great debate of the ages. Yeah, I mean, cupcakes are cupcakes. It's the icing on top and whatnot. Like, uh, I'm not really a guy of, with sweet tooth, but eh, I, I'm, I'm not a good guy to weigh in on this. Probably Pinkie Pie would help. Pinkie Pie would have trouble choosing, I think. Yep, true that. Ah, well. Another part of town, we get to see Amber and Twilight jollivanting around town. And the ponies are excited and wants to meet with the dragon princess in person. Princess Amber announced her title and whatnot, and she breathes fire. Rawr! And every pony is scared and runs off. What? Wouldn't that be kind of impressive? No? This is one of those cases where I feel like the horse nature is emphasized, which hasn't happened a lot lately. You show a giant flame to horses, and they're going to run. They're, it triggers a fight-or-flight instinct, as far as I know. Yep, I do remember that. That was one in the Lord of the Rings, behind the scene kind of thing, where they need to kind of have a horse in a fiery background or something like that. I do know what you mean, and it does make sense. But I'm shocked that Twilight didn't run, so that's good. Yes? She's Princess of Friendship and uh, and knows Ember, so she knows there's no menace behind it. 
But the other ponies have lived much more sheltered lives. Oh, at least they're more careful. <laughs> oh, but then we we get the cruelest international incident of them all. Oh, yes. It's it's stunning that the ponies have not yet gone to war over this transgression. I know. War, I tell you. I know. Muffin Poon gets her muffin squashed on the wall. Oh, how could she? I know I like Amber, but this is going too far. Oh, everybody's gonna die. We gotta get ponies on dragon destruction. Mm-hmm. But I, I do like how, <laughs> uh, Derpy is just walking away backwards slowly. <laughs> like, okay, I'm dealing with a crazy person here. <laughs> and after that, we get the best joke of this episode. Starlight comes in and Ember says, Hey, Twilight, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, Starlight says, uh, I'm Starlight, that's Twilight. <laughs> and the lion says, you ponies look alike. <laughs> that's species <laughs> ah, ah. Yes. <clears throat> but like I say, it's fun to see the show jab at itself. Mm-hmm. That, that is true, that is true. None shall be spared from the jabbage. I know, it's so much fun. Oh, sounds a little kinky too. Oh God, no. Ah. And we family show, I know. <laughs> and we head back to Spike, who's listening to Torex's problem. And while listening to Torex's problem, he noticed a couple kind of fighting over a chair and stuff. And Spike goes over and gives them his chair, and they bond. And I think some kind of loving relationship might start. So yay, that's good. Oh, I, I, I see. You. So you'll ship the two ponies that are sitting back to back, but not the two at the table. Really, Norman? Really? Hey, I, I, I ain't going to say anything much, but... Uh, I'm just busting your chops. Uh, because I can. Yes. Go uh, bend aside, Norman, some uh, Oh, God. Uh, I'm going to get through this. <clears throat> Torex here says, wow, that's very good. I should be assertive like that. And... Spike panics because he sees Amber in the distance and goes over to them. And Torex is feeling dejected because, once again, he didn't get his point across. And we cut to Amber and the ponies. And this is the part where Amber breaks down the ponies. You guys have sparkly names. You both are purplish ponies. And your cutie mark have pointy things. How? Am Mine's I- more a swirl. <laughs> Yeah, but still, uh, Spike comes over and Ember wants him to say that, hey, Spike, agree with me that they look alike. And Spike's being, you know, trying, being understanding that not really, but you, you, you know, you shouldn't say that. And Ember says, what, you're saying that I'm wrong? And screams at Spike till he falls flat on his butt. And Torek sees this and takes it as a threat to his best friend. He changed into a huge bear and starts to fight with Ember. And whoo! Oh, this looks this looks like it's going to be a grisly battle. I know. <laughs> uh, I think they're rights to bear arms, <laughs> or better yet, the right to arm bears. <laughs> uh, and yes. Spike's worst nightmare is coming true. And yeah. Well, it's his worst nightmare, but it's my fantasy. Yes, this is so awesome. This is so metal. Thorax can take almost any form and Ember is all power. Yeah. Let's see it. Yeah. Fight, 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 fight. Yes. And well, before that can happen, Spike stops the fight. And both of Ew. them. <laughs> and both of them. Get behind me. I'm not going to let this brute hurt you, Spike. After those two hear the same explanation and same reasoning, uh, they finally get it. Like, they both want to protect Spike. And Spike kind of spilled the beans, saying that I accidentally invited two of you guys here and I thought that you guys won't get along. And the both of them says, no, nah, we'll get along. Like, you, you don't trust us that much? Like, I feel offended. Harumph. And... Ember flies away, and Torex does too. And Spike feels like crap. That's the only way you can see it. 
Way to go, Spike. Mm-hmm. You caused an international incident. Way to go. Yep, yep. Uh, but in all honesty, this kind of scenario here does happen to the best of us. Oh, yeah. I uh, once once introduced my family to my friends uh, in a dinner. Mm-hmm. And after the dinner, I was kind of nervous about everyone getting along. <clears throat> and both parties said to me, they're not as weird as you made them sound. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best case scenario. I'm in a situation where I have a friend who's, well, he he's very snobbish in, in a sense where he's kind of pro-me. And my other friends don't really like him. And I have to play Switzerland in this scenario where I have to make sure that they don't fight. And luckily for me, they don't, but still. For a minute there, I thought you meant you held both their bank accounts in complete secrecy. <laughs> I wish. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, back on the episode, we see Torex kicking stones in the pond and Ember coming down beside him and trying to, well, comfort him, not really. And Ember asks, what's wrong? Torex explains that he, the leader of his changeling, uh, not tribe, uh, what was it? Was it tribe, did they say? Well, basically of all the changelings, but there are a few holdouts who still want to look dark and mysterious and threatening, and I won't lie, I'd, I'd like if a few of them kept that look. It's cool. Yeah. And medicine. And mysterious. Yeah. But unfortunately, no. So, Torex here says that I'm the leader of my changeling group, and nobody's really listening to me. I try to give them gifts. I try to um, be understanding to them. And Ember says, hush, you should keep quiet. And Torex says, ooh, wow, that's very good. Like, you, 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 I should take, I should pick up on that. Like, yeah, I should do that with my own crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Torex asks Ember what's her problem. And Ember doesn't really want to share, but Torex coaxes it out of her. And Ember says that, um, I'm trying to, well, we dragons are trying to make friends, but we have this competitive streak in us. So we we don't really kind of know, well, I, I don't really know how to do this. Because whenever I win, I like to rub it in their face and tell them, I'm the best, you're the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, Torex asks, well, how do you think they would feel? And they feel defeated and sad. So yeah, that, that's the thing. And with that, Amber has an understanding of what to do now. And it seems that both of them learn from each other. So yeah, that's good. And talking about the feelings, uh, Amber says, I know who I want to let out my feelings to first. And she flies off. And Torex goes, oh yeah, now I know. Both appear in front of Spike and Spike says he's sorry. And you know what? I don't really like the whole groveling Spike here because it's not really... Uh, how, how do I put it? It's kind of degrading. Well, that's... Unfortunately, that's the biggest thing. Spike episodes, when they when they treat him like... Uh, just like he's he's meant to be brought low. I guess I should clarify what I said earlier. Uh, ponies often are the source of their own problems. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they undermine themselves. But in Spike episodes, usually there's an exterior issue and one of the main six's uh, own fallibilities undermine them so they can't fix the problem directly. They have to overcome themselves before they can overcome the issue. Spike episodes, there is no issue usually. It's just him causing the problem. And as a result, you're not what you're not really cheering for him to fix things. You're just saying, "Will you get your comeuppance already? <laughs> get your comeuppance. Is, Up with the comeuppance." Is this similar to how Applejack episodes are? Because I remember way back when in season one, where Applejack made a bet with a Big Mac, and he she didn't want to ask for help, and in the end, she had to ask for help. Is something similar to that? It is, although that also featured a stampede by rampaging, uh, well, not rampaging, but startled cows. Uh, 
and Rainbow Dash and the other Applejack had a full plate of helping her friends. Mm -hmm. I feel like while Applejack was engineering more of her own problem, it was still, at the end of the day, there were some external factors involved. Here, Spike is bringing in all the external factors himself. He invited these characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's the one making wild assumptions about them. For which, I guess they're right to call him out, saying have a little faith in us. Oh, true that, true that. But at the same time, too, you have to be careful with this kind of situations, too. Because it's like inviting Genji and Hanzo into the table for dinner and hoping for the best. Like, there's going to be a fight going on. Are you kidding? That would have made Thanksgiving awesome! Yeah. Everyone else is worried about talking about politics. I'd be like, ooh, is he going to shoot a multi-arrow? <laughs> well, Genji used to flex. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that, that would be you, cool. Oh, uh, that, that would be like, cool. <laughs> and then you'd be like, yay, Hanzo Sama, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to keep hammering that into the ground until you have a conniption. <laughs> Soonish, uh, but getting back on track. <laughs> uh, Never getting back on track. Uh, Torex and Amber express their feelings towards Spike about how disappointed they are towards him, and they forgive him. And with that, Torex pulls everyone's for a hug, and yay, uh, friendship problem solved. And Starlight here points out that yes, um, you did solve the friendship problem that you caused. So, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> and then Emperor nearly kills Thorax. Uh, yes, nearly. Uh, but still, uh, at the end, uh, there's a peace treaty, not really peace treaty, but a diplomatic peace thingy between the dragons and Shingling. And yeah, thing goes well. Yay, the end. And with that, let's head into our final thoughts. Or, yeah, let's head into our final thoughts. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Like, we've been discussing a bit of this, so is there anything more to add that we didn't add in? Yeah, I think we've covered it pretty well. It's Even though this is an episode that gives us much-needed time with Ember and Thorax, because here's the thing about big changes, especially with the changelings. It's the same as it was with Twilight getting wings. The more time you spend with it, the more natural it feels the more you come to expect it so this new changeling look that had so many people up in arms will become more familiar if we see more of young changelings and it's good to see thorax sort of struggling and it's good to see ember struggling with her role the only character who i don't enjoy watching struggle is spike because he is being groveling cowardly and uh, a bad friend it's just like do we really have to put him through the ringer every time for him to have an episode? Gauntlet of Fire was great because he was stepping up and being his best self. And that's frustrating. And Gauntlet of Fire is season what now again? I'm trying to look at the episode. That would be season six? Oh, yes. Gauntlet of Fire. I remember this one. This is the first appearance of Ember. Yes. The introduction of Ember and everyone's favorite Sundere princess. Yes. Sundere, Sundere, Sundere. Sundere, Sundere, Sundere. But yeah, I do agree with you that they had to bring Spike to a lower point than per usual. Usually, uh, Spike here is the straight man. He's the kind of stable guy that has almost all of the answers, but doesn't really panic that much. And yeah, once he... Um, how do I put this? This episode kind of lowers him down to a point where all's well that ends well. Kind of level. All's well that ends well. It, it it all works out, so, you know, there will be no war. And though I don't mean to sound like a warmonger, just just think about it. Dragons versus changelings would be so epic. I mean, ponies versus yaks, I just wanted to see a curb stomping. But dragons versus changelings, oh! You know what, Silver? I want to see an awesome fight at the end of the My Little Pony movie, but we didn't get it. I went, I wanted the hippogriffs charging to the rescue. I'm sad that now. Too. Yeah, that too. You know, okay. Ah, oh, man, we need to discuss that one soonish. Like, okay, my, my thoughts on this episode. This episode is awesome. 
It had Amber, it had Torex, it had funny jokes from Amber. The whole setup was kind of funny, but at the cost of Spike. Spike here is not that bad of a character. It's just that the way that the show made him out to be, well, kind of put him on a lower pedestal. Which is not that good, but at the same time, too, I can understand. Uh, they had to lower Spike's level just so that the episode could work. And would I say this is out of character? No, not really, because it fits with Spike's MO. And Spike here is, quote-unquote, a child. Like, if I had to guess his age, I would think that he's within the uh, teens, early teens or late uh, mid-teens. So, yeah, uh, teenager makes a lot of mistakes. So, yeah. But anywho... Let's head on to, well, next thing. Um, Silver, you got any idea what you're going to do next week? I feel like introducing a little chaos into the mix. Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean my weeaboo tendencies. Oh, God. <laughs> no. We are going to visit My Little Pony, the comics, issue 57, in which Pinkie Pie becomes lost in Discord's chaos dimension. Oh, ah. God, no, that can't be good. It can't be good for them, but, again, but much like my war fantasies, it's going to be awesome for us. Uh, true, that, true, that. And with that, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get early access to the review and discussion podcast. You'll get access to deleted contents and access to uh, Patreon exclusives. And also a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker, Cat, and Dragatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Amy. Thank you so much, guys, for all the awesome support. So, anywho, I have been Roman Sanzo. Minasan, arigato! Atashi Silver Quill! Kawaii desu! Ah, anywho, we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya! Adios! Okay. I didn't break down, but I was close. Oh, it's excellent, yes. I must break you. Mm-hmm.